What is up everybody and welcome to another episode of the VFR CBR 800 V4 bike build. Episode 25. Now if you're new here and you don't know already, when this bike's done, we give it away to one of the supporters over on Patreon. Go check it out down here. You can sign up for almost any dollar amount. You can stop anytime you want and you only get billed every time a new build video launches. In today's video, we're tackling a small issue because I'm waiting on some items. What I'm waiting on is the front headlight so I can finish the front fairing system. And then we got a set of really cool front brake lines coming in, which is gonna be nice because then I can get the front brake on this thing. To be able to load and unload this bike on a trailer without a front brake is very sketchy, so that'll be nice to get done. What are we doing today? Check this out. I've been noticing the swing arm is coming straight out, perpendicular with the ground. And normally a swing arm is tilted a little bit more like this. And I'm like, what is going on with this rear end? You know, with the subframe kind of in place, there's not a lot of ground clearance here for the back wheel. When it goes up and down, I'm like, what is going on? So I measured the CBR shock that I put on here against the stock VFR shock. I should have noticed this before, dumb mistake. This new shock off the CBR is one and a half inches shorter than the VFR shock, which means today's mission is we're gonna take off the shock, we're gonna remove the talk shock mount and modify it so it's one and a half inches longer and that'll bring the back in where we need it. So let's get that shock off first. We'll take the bracket into the metal fab shop, bring it back here, get it on, get this back in all straightened out. Let's start wrenching. In a video very soon, once we get that front brake on, we're gonna take the whole bike down to the fab shop and build a whole, not a whole new, but we're gonna build a one of a kind subframe for this thing that utilizes the CBR 1000 RR, uh, you know, rear fender area. Oh, I forgot I put gas on the bike and hooked up all the fuel lines. So that's a little bit of a problem we'll work around. All right, so the tricky part about this is I need to get the weight off the shock and by lifting up the chassis. So I have this flat jack underneath the bike, a couple pieces of wood, and I'm just gonna have the wood hit this part of the chassis right here. And that way I don't have to take off the exhaust or anything like that. Just gonna jack it up enough to take the weight off the shock and undo the top bolt, get the bracket out of there, good to go. All right, so now we just take a 17 millimeter wrench and loosen the top nut for the top shock mount. I just figured I'd leave the gas tank where it is. It's enough space. All right, now we can take off the top shock nut and bolt. It's a 17 millimeter. I want to always make sure the back side's not turning, which it is. Looks like a 14 millimeter. And just push the bolt out. If there's no weight on the shock, bolt should come right out, which it is. Boom. Oh, look at that. Okay. So should you be able to just drop this out of here? Come on, baby. All right, there it is. So we just need to drop this bracket right here, an inch and a half, put a longer bolt in there and put her back in.
So what we did here was we just took the stock bracket, cut out the old stud with the grinder, made an inch and a half spacer, put in the new longer stud bolt, which was uh, four inches long, went from two and a half to four, so that's an inch and a half longer. So I made this inch and a half spacer, slid it in, bolted it down, jacked up the bike about another inch and a half or so, so it would fit. And now we got it in here. Now I just gotta put the nut here on the uh, other side of the shock bolt. Oh my God. Always, all these wires in the way, jeez. Sorry my hands in your way, but get this nut on here. 14 millimeter wrench on the back side, 17 millimeter socket on this side. Now I just gotta tighten up this top nut here. 14 millimeter wrench. I think it's American, so I'm gonna go, it's a little tight with the 14 mil. Yeah, it's more of a 916. That's okay. Now, if you guys notice that the stud is not very big around, it's not. I mean, it's a small stud compared to what came on the, this came off the CBR 1000 shock here. You can see how much bigger that stud is. But most of the pressure is just going up. So there's not a lot of strain on that stud, on that stud bolt, whatever you want to call it. Good deal. All right, let's take a look at the right height. All right, guys, so you can probably see that swing arm now is going more like this rather than level. So we gained, I don't even, we may have gained two inches of ground clearance. The exhaust was, I mean, that exhaust was way down here. That was pretty scary having that, that close to the ground. So now we got a lot of good ground clearance here, just like stock. And back end's popped up the way it needs to be, which once we, now that we got the back end configured the way it needs to be, We'll get the forks right. We may have to drop the forks and the triple clamp some. We may have to put the, the clip-ons below the triple clamp, which um, we'll handle that later. You know, sometimes when you're filming, you're, you're just rushing through stuff and you're not always thinking everything completely through. Well, I forgot to paint that bracket I just made. I didn't paint it and now it's got some bare metal. That's not good. So easy enough to pull off, I just, Wish I would have thought of it before. So I'll pull it off and I'll spray paint it and we'll get it done. If you guys are painting parts on your bike, I highly recommend Eastwood. Don't get that cheap Krylon crap. Go with the Eastwood brand. This is the primer. This is the chassis black. This stuff is, it's about five times more expensive, but it's five times better. So if you wanna do a good job that's gonna last longer that you can trust, I suggest going with Eastwood. So I'm just gonna throw a couple Coats of paint on this, put her back on. All right, I already cleaned the part really good so there's no grease residue. Let's do one coat of primer on this thing. And I'm putting masking tape on the inside here where the shock would rub, so I'm not dealing with that. This primer almost looks like paint, it's so good. Let that dry a bit, throw on a couple coats of paint, throw her back on. That's all we can do for now. Like I said, the front brake cables are on their way here. I got a confirmation that they're on their way. So the next video, we'll get those on so we can get the bike off the lift, get it down to the shop and start working on that subframe. I really wanna get that subframe done. I mean, the bike's close. We just get the subframe done, get, um, get the front fairing mounted down solid with the front headlight in it, get the tail light put in. And that's kind of it, man. So it's getting really close. So yeah, that's it for episode 25, guys. I mean, like I said, it was a really simple episode, but one step closer to completion. Don't forget, go check out the Patreon if you want to be the owner of the bike. And we'll see you guys in episode 26.